I spent the last few months collecting spectra from a variety of different instruments, from wind to strings to percussions to human voice. And I am going to share with you quite a collection today. So I'm really excited to be able to present this. One of the most interesting ones that I found were organ pipes that are supposed to be open pipe, all partials, closed pipe, only odd partials or odd Fourier components, 1357. But that's not exactly what I found. Yes, it is more true for the closed pipe that the second and fourth and sixth components are more suppressed, but by no means is true only for the open pipe. As you can see in these open organ pipe, uh, the second and fourth components are quite a bit lower intensity than the first and the third components. So if you look at 90 and 60, again, this is a difference of a thousand in intensity or amplitude of the sound wave. So um, this kind of looks like a closed pipe, but it's supposed to be an open pipe. So here it goes. The formula may not be 100% accurate, at least not for every pipe in the world. Maybe there was something special about that pipe. Maybe because it was a square pipe instead of perfectly cylindrical. Closed pipe, however, this was precisely the same pipe where I put my hand on it to close it. And so the frequency went down by a factor of two. I went down one octave. So from A4 at 440 Hertz, I went to A3 at 220 Hertz. Now it's even more pronounced. You see that the first and second and third and fourth components are actually hugely diverse in intensity. So we can see that the volume is 90 and 50 decibel respectively, above 90 and below 50. So this is a huge difference. This is 10 to the fifth. It means 100,000 times lower intensity. So it's even more than more diverse than it was for the open pipe. And, and this goes according to textbook right, following the formula perfectly. Interestingly, this is more true for the first handful of components. So let's say the first uh, five or six components, and then it pretty much evens out. And as you can see, seven, eight, nine, and 10 are all very similar to one another. A classic open cylindrical pipe is a recorder playing an A5, so this is twice A4, 880 hertz. And we can see the first, the second, the third, the fourth component, which are integer multiples of that fundamental at 880 hertz. A flute it is another classic open pipe that behaves perfectly like an open pipe with the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. You see the differences in these intensities in the, the uh, volume or the amplitude of this uh, Fourier components. This is what gives the voice to the instrument. This is why a flute is different from a recorder. Um, do I have the same note played by two different instruments? Yeah, look at the clarinet and the oboe. They're completely different. But clarinet and oboe are actually very different from the flute and the recorder. Why? Because the flute and the recorder are open pipes. So all of the Fourier components are there. And they really do believe that way better than my square organ pipes. The clarinet is a closed cylindrical pipe. So only the odd components are there, are present. And so we see the fundamental here is A3 uh, at 220 hertz. And we see that the second and the fourth component are greatly uh, suppressed, greatly less intense than the first and the third. And again, only the, for the first five or so components, this is very true because then quite a, uh, there's, there's a leveling off of the higher partials that all pretty much have the same intensity. 
Interestingly, the voice of the instrument is given by precisely the relative intensities of all these peaks that we see. This is what distinguishes one instrument from another. So why don't we see the second component? Well, because it's 40 decibel but before the first below the first, therefore it's four orders of magnitude less intense. The sound intensity level is uh, uh, 10,000 times lower. Another closed cylindrical pipe is the clarinet. Again, because it's a closed pipe, it only has the odd components and oddly enough, <laughs> but not intended, only the second one is suppressed here by quite a bit. It's 40 decibel versus 80. So it's again, 10 to the four times uh, lower intensity, but the fourth is not suppressed. It's just as intense. In fact, a little bit more intense than the third. So oboe playing A4 um, is this, uh, is different for two reasons. One is that this is a closed um, cylindrical pipe for the clarinet and is a closed conical pipe for the oboe. And a closed conical pipe behaves like an open cylindrical pipe. So the oboe playing A4 has all components in a Fourier spectrum. And so we see A4 is the first component, second, third, fourth, fifth, all of them are there with their own intensity. And this profile um, of uh, amplitudes, which is actually typical of the oboe. So when we compare the clarinet playing the A4 and an oboe playing A4, we see that they end up being very different to, from one another because one is a closed cylindrical, one is closed conical. So that second harmonic is much less intense in the uh, clarinet, much more intense in the oboe. And that makes the biggest difference to our ear. And on top of that, the clarinet has fairly even distribution of partials here at higher frequencies, whereas the oboe has a very large uh, uh, set of uh, harmonics at lower harmonic numbers, uh, up to five, and then it's much lower at higher partials, at higher harmonics. The trumpet, turns out to be a conical pipe as well. In fact, all Fourier components are there. And for this particular one, the fundamental frequency is an A4, and then all of the multiples are there. A4 by one, by two, by three, by four, by five. And as you can see, this is what makes a trumpet different from um, another wind instrument or any other instrument playing an A4, the trumpet sounds distinct because of these relative intensities of the partials. Let's look at string instruments. And uh, we can look at a guitar that has a fundamental frequency of A2. That's one of the strings. And so one of the open strings on the guitar is A2. And so we see its first uh, component, the fundamental frequency, it's 110 Hertz. And then by two, by three, by four, by five, and up until about 20 is perfectly audible. And above the 20th partial, 20th harmonic, we don't really see, we don't really hear very much. And we don't see very much in this Fourier spectrum. The reason we don't hear it is that this other higher partials are all extremely soft. They are very low volume, below 20 decibel. And so they are hardly audible, especially when we are hearing um, larger volume sounds at the same time. The same guitar playing the same string that was A2, now actually touching it and pushing on it on the fingerboard at half the length. 
that means twice the frequency. Therefore, now the fundamental frequency when depressing the string halfway at L over two on the, the guitar fingerboard becomes an A3. The frequency doubles is now 220. All of the partials are there. For the cello, this is an open A. This is one of the strings of the cello, A3 at 220 hertz. And you see all of its higher partials. Quite a few of them are intense up until the, yeah, let's say the 17th or 18th. Man, the 20th is really weak. Another open string on the cello is G2. And again, all of its partials, we see that the second is actually very weak and then the third is greater intensity and so on. And this gives the voice of the cello, the fact that it's distinct from another instrument playing the same note. This particular envelope, this particular behavior of the partials gives an instrument the voice or the timbre or the tone color the fact that these different components have different intensities. For a piano, classic A4, all components are there and you can see them extremely distinct on this spectrum. For percussion instruments instead, you see a lot of frequencies playing simultaneously. There are very high frequencies and low frequencies, and there is a lot going on in this spectrum, too much to really tell them apart. And so just enjoy how complicated it is visually. One of the simplest instruments, if not the simplest I could find for this Fourier spectra, uh, analysis that I'm presenting was the tuning fork, which is indeed a percussion instrument. You hit it with a mallet and let it ring. You let it oscillate. I expected to see only one frequency. And in fact, I saw three, um, A4 and then multiplied by two and by three. And this surprised me a little because when you look at it with an oscilloscope, you see a beautifully sinusoidal behavior. And so I really only expected one component, but in fact, this is one component. Remember again that this uh, decibel scale is a logarithmic scale. And so the difference in amplitude here uh, the difference in volume is from 90 decibel for the first component to 35 decibel for the second component. And that's five orders of magnitude in sound intensity level variation. So that's a factor of 100,000 times lower intensity. This is even less. So this is 10 decibel. It's absolutely not audible. And not even the oscilloscope picks them up. Uh, so it's not just that our year, uh, years don't pick it up, but the oscilloscope doesn't either. This is actually 10 to the 8, 100 million times lower intensity than the fundamental. So for this reason, the oscilloscope doesn't see it because they're really not uh, there at any detectable level. Finally, the human voice that has this beautiful profile, it has a lot more harmonics than I expected, and they're extremely regularly distributed. This is a fantastic singer. Her name is Ying Hui Jong, and the fundamental frequency she was playing, she was singing with her voice, was an F3 with frequency 175 hertz. And I actually measured and placed these black ticks precisely where these uh, peaks are and look how regularly spaced they are. Fantastically reproducible. And so you can see that the human voice is marvelous, especially when one is a great singer like Ying Hui is. Thank you.